Today's guest created a platform that connects fashion and technology. Jordana Guimarez joins us to talk about co-founding Fashion Innovation, publishing her new book, and her plans for the future. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Hey everybody, let's give Jordana a big warm welcome to the show. It's so fabulous to have you in School of Hustle. Thank you, it's such a pleasure and honor to be here. Well, this year I went to Fashion Innovation at FIT in New York City because I, I love technology and I love clothes and I was so taken by what Fashion Innovation was all about and then I met you and I learned that you were the co-founder. I was blown away. Um, I was there, so I experienced it, but those watching have not, may not have been to Fashion Innovation before. Yeah. Could you start by telling us what it is? What is yeah. it all about? Of course, so Fashion Innovation is a platform where we showcase innovations via ways of technology that are shaping the fashion industry, but not only shaping the fashion industry, but also to make the world a better place. So we started putting together various thematics where we showcase these companies and brands, where we talk about everything from sustainability to inclusivity to women empowerment, but then we also go into entrepreneurship, manufacturing production, new textiles, so very wide array of topics. And just recently, because of seeing all of the trends that the industry is headed towards, we sloganed our company to be Fashion is to Love. And so Fashion Ovation, Fashion is to Love, showcasing technologies that are shaping the industry. So that's really what it is in a yeah. nutshell. I, you know, when I was there, I, I was there supporting Emily Brickell of Chic Sketch, who was a former School of Hustle guest. And she was moderating a panel where um, Hemp Black was on it. Yeah. And they were talking about how they are designing like an ink using hemp that somehow makes the production and the print better for the, the globe. Yeah. And, and that's like one topic is one example. I, I was just, I was just so impressed. I so much enjoyed what you are bringing together. Thank you so like, much. Like the idea is so big and it, it makes so much sense. And I certainly loved your event. I had a great oh, time. So and, and I feel like I've, I've made so many friends and connections for my network from it. That's so awesome. it's really overall a great thing. <laughs> now I understand that you co-founded Fashion Innovation with your husband. How did the two of you concept the idea and bring it to life? So my husband has been in entrepreneurship and innovations via ways of technology, scaling companies that are scaling, internationalizing those companies. And for the last, his whole career basically as an entrep not an entrepreneur, in work, sorry. His whole career is like a worksman. Yeah. And I've always been in fashion PR, doing a lot of freelance marketing work for companies like Nina Ricci, Porsche Design, Lonval, which kind of started my career and then doing it for the last 15 years. And so when we got married in the last three years, we had two babies. We wanted to kind of put together what he does, what I do, and encompass it all into one amazing company. And so we came up with Fashion Ovation, which really is the perfect marriage between me and him. Wow. Um, and so it's really exciting to do it with him, for but sure. But how did you get people to, to buy it, right? So you know, you were at FIT. Yeah. It was a huge stage. No. <laughs> What's interesting is that from day one, yeah. we actually came up with the idea July of 2018, and our first event actually took place in September of 2018. So in only two months of coming up with the name, the idea, we were able to do an event with 39 speakers from like founder of Shopify, directors of NASA. But the interesting thing was that cold emailing a lot of these people, within seconds, we would get an email back saying, yes, I'm interested, I'm in. And we had no website, no nothing, just the idea and the body of an email and people were really excited about it. Yeah. So I think because the world is kind of lacking, you know, connecting with people and storytelling and I feel like it's the trends that the industry is trying to go towards and they don't have a platform where they can talk about these things. So I think that we kind of put like the boat, I don't know if this makes sense, but like the boat on the ocean at the right time yeah. to where it's just kind of yeah. guiding us. And it just happened so fast. And just through putting an event together, we realized because of the success of that, that we didn't just have an event in our hands, but rather a business. And that's really how it came to fruition. So it was really exciting. And you have met so many fascinating people yeah. along the way. 
who or what is your favorite story? Who's the most inspirational person that you've worked with through your business? It's hard to say most inspirational because I think different people inspire you, right? Yeah. For different reasons. Yeah. I recently spoke two days ago to this girl in California. She has a brand called Tom Foolery, mm -hmm. and she creates jumpsuits to where the woman, when you go to the bathroom, you don't have to take the full thing off. You literally just unwrap the part to go to the toilet. Oh. And it's made, all the textile is just plastic bottles. That's how the, the jumpsuits are made. Oh, wow. And she just built a school in Kenya to help women in that region sew these jumpsuits. So she, I mean, it's amazing. And she's 28 or 27 years old, something in that range. So when you look at something like that, you know, it's like yeah. unbelievable. Well, um, okay, I'm blown away because she has clearly solved a, a problem that women have. Yes. That, that is a big pain in the neck. So annoying. When you go to the bathroom and the jumpsuit, the whole thing. <laughs> That's just a problem she solved. But she went that extra step yes. to think about sustainability. Yes. Yes. Wages yep. in Kenya. Yes. She is yeah. doing a lot with that one story. So, exactly. so when you meet someone like that, I agree, wow, there's a lot going yeah. on. Do you you bring her into the fold? So does she speak at Fashion Innovation? Yeah, so we're gonna okay. have her speak yeah. in February. I just learned of her. Wow. And I was so blown away that I was like, oh my gosh. I, I keep talking about her now because I think it's just, she encompasses sustainability, women empowerment, um, yeah. technical innovation. I mean, right. every, in all in one brand. So That's right. it's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Um, and you're at the centerpiece giving people and brands like this a platform. Yeah, and that's what's right? really exciting. I speak to like 15 to 20 entrepreneurs every day now that are doing innovations in different kinds of way. I mean, every day I feel blessed because through having this platform, I'm yeah. getting to meet all these amazing individuals. Yeah. And also one thing that I think is really cool is because we have, you know, the Googles and the Levi's and the Mara Hoffmans to be able to bring in these startups and put them on stage with these big companies. Yeah. It gives them such an opportunity to create new collaborations. And so it, there's like so many, so many things that come of fashion innovation aside from us just being like a channel for fashion tech that I think it, it, it's really That's fun. Right. Yeah. And so when you think about um, being that platform for everyone to join the stage and participate in what what I think is, is a movement, really, yeah. right? Um, as a business owner and an entrepreneur, do you monetize that? I'm very transparent. Yeah. I think like as a, as a startup, we're yeah. still like, you know, losing out a little bit when yeah. it comes to monetary, yeah. but we're gaining so much as far as knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so I think like as it progresses, we find there's a lot of things that are coming to us right now of people wanting different things within our space. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out, you know, what, what are the best models to really like monetize from, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that is an ongoing process. Yeah. But, I, you know, most for us, like obviously any business, you want to profit so you can live and all of that. But at the same time, I think, you know, for me, creating social impact is so important also. So it's nice to be able to find a happy medium between the two and I think we're on the way to doing that. I, I think you are too. Um, would you agree with me when I said that fashion innovation is a movement? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why fashion is to love yeah. is our new slogan. Yeah. And what's been really fun with that is that fashion is something to everybody, right? Right. Even if you think you're not a trendy, sometimes you say, oh, you know, I work in fashion. People are like, oh, I have no, like, I don't know anything about fashion. That's not true because Everybody wakes up with a certain mood and you put something on that's going to make you feel that mood that you're waking up in, right? Yep. And so by you putting an outfit together, even if to you that's not considered trendy or mm -hmm. fashion, it is. Right. Because what you wear is what personifies you and that in, in a sense is fashion. And so it's been really fun to like carry the slogan of fashion is to love around and ask people what is fashion to you. Mm -hmm. And we've been getting those answers and viralizing that on social yeah. and it's become really like a movement and we're excited to to just internationalize that and have people feel yeah. connected to something. And That's so how would you answer that? For me, fashion, yeah. so fashion is really feeling comfortable in your own skin. Fashion is understanding what your identity is and um, being proud of that through what you wear. Yeah. Um, I would say that that's, yeah, what fashion is to me. I want to talk to you about a very exciting next endeavor for you, which is your new book. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's called It Can Be You. Yes. Um, you know, what is your book about and, and how did you come to publish it? So the book is, it's, 
giving a face to homelessness using the voices of fashion influencers um, through social media, hashtag it can be you, and now the book that I've put together and I just got a publishing deal recently, so it's, it's really, really exciting. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, I can't wait. The day that I walk so, into a store and see my book, I think I'm gonna faint. So, <laughs> as you should, That that's outrageous. Yeah. So it's not self-published. It, it was self-published and, and then it up. just got too hard and then I let, like, yep, put yep. it in the back burner and then I spoke at an event recently in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Somebody saw it, they were a publisher. Yep. They reached out to me and they're like, we want to make this happen. So now I'm in the stages of getting it published. So give me an example of a scenario in the book. So what I did is three years ago, I was pregnant with my, four years ago, I should say, okay. I was pregnant with my first daughter and I really wanted to do something bigger. And I feel like on social media, um, you know, you go on there and Kim Kardashian is eating a salad out of a plastic bowl. Everybody's like, where did she buy that salad? I want to eat it too. Mm -hmm. And I feel that since they have that influence, why not use it for the good? Right. So then I'm like, I got ambassadors that are really big fashion influencers to share stories of struggles and how they overcame them. And then I raised over $10,000 on GoFundMe and created a street team who gave out meals to the homeless and got their stories of how they wound up on the street. So in the book, you have side by side the story of the famous influencer of struggle and overcome. And then you have the story of the homeless individual. And it shows you very similar struggles, but the circumstance that separates the two, hence it can be you. Um, and one thing that was really interesting is um, you know, you have a lot of influencers that come to New York with a big dream of um, becoming an artist, becoming a musician, and they make it, right? Even through struggles, they end up making a name for themselves. But then you have those that come and don't. Mm -hmm. And because they're embarrassed or ashamed or their family kind of told them, you know, you're no longer like accepted here because you're doing something we don't approve of, whatever the situation may be. I've heard a few of those stories in the streets. Mm -hmm. So like having that side-by-side -side comparison, you know, you think, Something as simple as not having like the family acceptance or not having the support system mm -hmm. is something that can already separate the two individuals. So I learned a lot with this project and I'm so excited. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you so much for opening up. Thank you so much. I, the work that you're doing, it's brilliant. I appreciate it's it. It's meaningful and impactful. Thank you. Thank you. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, so following that, we are now going to transition to our favorite game called Hustle Time. All right, so team, might I please have 60 seconds on the clock? All right. Would you rather visit Licorice Castle or Peppermint Forest? Peppermint Forest. Which Hogwarts house would you be sorted into? Which one? Hogwarts. Harry Potter. Oh, I don't know Harry Potter. It's okay. Camping or glamping? <laughs> glamping. Last person you texted? My mom. M&Ms or Skittles? M&Ms. Ski trip or beach vacation? Beach vacation. Favorite part of your day? Uh, waking up with my kids. Ideal fake sick day? Uh, staying in watching This Is Us. <laughs> early bird or night owl? Uh, early bird. Fictional place you'd like to visit? Mm, Alice in Wonderland. Go to karaoke song? Oh, Alanis Morissette. Anything Alanis mm -hmm. Morissette. Finish this sentence. When I dance, I look like? A crazy person. <laughs> song that is currently stuck in your head? This moment, if I could turn back time, share. I don't ah, know why. Would okay. you rather never be able to teach or never be able to learn? Never be able to teach. Favorite Disney movie? Um, Frozen. First app you open in the morning? Instagram. All right, nice. Oh, that was like pressure. Nice. <laughs> See, it was easy. Okay, one, two, 15, 16. Nice, nice job. Favorite part of your day? Waking up with my kids and having that morning to just kind of unwind. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? You can learn anything from a, reading a book, but passion is something that comes from within. Worst piece of advice? It's impossible. How do you use your career to inspire others? Through making sure that there's always some type of social impact or learn something that people can walk away with rather than just something that's in it for me. Ever felt like walking away? No. One thing you still need to learn? I feel like sometimes I think I can do it all myself. I need to learn to delegate. What do you want people to learn from you? That you should always be super genuine and honest and don't take that as a weakness, but rather something that will bring people closer to you. What's next for you? Creating an impact, that's my dream. Mm -hmm. Who inspires you? My mom. Who challenges you? 
my husband. Well, the last piece of advice is for the entrepreneurial, our favorite pug. Um, mm -hmm. So, Noodle, and now, uh, do you want Jonathan to hold Noodle, or do you I want to hold him? You good? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, Noodle. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so cute. Oh. Hi. Oh. Noodle tries to stay up to date on the latest trends, but he finds that it's pretty hard to keep up as things are always changing. What advice would you give an inspiring fashion enthusiast who wants to stay in the know about the latest trends in the space? You see, but I think a little differently. So I don't think of what's trending to be like, I don't feel like you have to wear exactly what's trending. I feel like okay. you can make your own trend based on what feels and looks best on you. Yeah. So I think that doing that, you're always gonna be in trend. I don't know if that makes sense, but I it think does. of it that way. It does. So you tap your inner sort of, you know, preferences. Yeah. Your body type, your exactly. style, your mood. Exactly. And because, you wear you. Yeah, because not every trend is meant to fit everybody, right? Yeah. We always like to end School of Hustle with a final thought. And so I'm going to share three quotes with you. Okay. And ask if you would let me know which one resonates the most with you and why. Okay? So number one, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Number two, nothing in the world is more common than unsuccessful people with talent. Number three, I find that the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. I'd say number two. Number two, okay. Because I think that everybody has something that they're really good at doing. Everybody has a gift. Yes. And I feel like a lot of people, because of fear, never get, never like move forward with what that gift is to really make that happen. I feel like if everybody that had a gift, I'm so sorry, if everybody that had a gift, um, you know, kind of like did their most to be able to get it out to the world and their successes, I think that that would improve a lot of things, you know, in a lot of different industries. That goes for just people in general, but that yeah. really resonates with me. Because yeah. I think fear stops a lot of people yeah. from being their yeah. best. There, and there is so much talent out there, too. So your much. Point. So much. Everybody has something to offer. I am I, truly inspired by you. Uh, I'm super inspired by your work, too. I, and I think you're amazing. And I, I love your energy. Thank you. Yeah. I think what you're doing is incredible. Thank and you. And I can't wait to attend your next fashion invasion. I think I, it's in February, yeah, right? It's February 5th. I yeah. really hope you come. I would love to come. Yeah. So I'm officially invited. We've yes. all heard it. <laughs> I have an invitation, and I will be yes, there. Yes, you do. How can everyone follow Fashion Innovation? Ooh, so Instagram is our biggest social platform, so fashionnovation.nyc. And then the website is fashionnovation.nyc. So F-A-S-H innovation.nyc. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so, so much. You're so welcome. Follow Fashion Innovation across social. Follow GoDaddy across social too. We're posting more fabulous entrepreneurs like Jordana every week on GoDaddy Social. So follow us across the board. Follow Fashion Innovation. Thank and we'll you. see y'all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.